presenting. So yes. we will have video before. Yes, uh, actually the project lead is in the U.S., so he couldn't come. But uh, we have a, a running video for a few minutes uh, describing the project before I come in with the semantic aspects. Hello everyone, my name is Christoph Sander, and first of all I would like to apologize that I couldn't come to class in person. I'm an historian of science, and I'm interested in annotations by readers of early modern books. And by annotations, I mean all these things, for example, that I've highlighted here in pink, that have been edited by a later reader. When I started this project roughly two years ago, the question that was leading my research was about what are the hot topics, the topics that got annotated the most in these books. And annotations... I understand as traces of interest into topics that are manifested in the printed text. And by recording and counting this material evidence, these annotations, we can measure the reception of ideas, that is at least the leading hypotheses. The data that is underlying this approach consists in roughly 700 individual printed copies of a few early modern editions that all focus on the subject of magnetism to have a somewhat coherent um, subject. We extracted bibliographic metadata for all these editions and copies. We recorded annotations as structured textual data relying on a controlled vocabulary. And we ingested also all the full texts of these editions and the metadata for illustrations that are printed in these books. And we did so in a team of researchers and students. Then we decided to transform this data into a knowledge graph, and this is where Hassan and Alessandro ca come in. This knowledge graph is designed in a blade graph database together with a research space instance, and the data we use is fully compliant with CytoCRM and other established ontologies. By now, Hassan, Alessandro, and I have built this public website that allows users to explore this knowledge graph and analyze our research data. On this website of ours, you can check out, for example, how much data there is, and you can see that we have almost 10,000 annotations currently, you can check out where on a map these individual copies are currently located. You can zoom in and see where the libraries and sites are. You can also check out individual editions, where the copies of these editions are and what annotations in all the copies of these editions are and on which pages the, they occur the most. So we'll make a switch here. Um, present a view. Mm. Yeah, I would uh, be happy to present here. Then we'll duplicate. So, uh, you've seen the um, website, you heard about the project. Uh, of course, there's a data set underneath, and I'm here to um, uh, discuss a couple of uh, issues about modeling and the uh, interesting challenges that arise. So, this is what a basic unit of, um, of the census that is cataloging the ma magnetic margins looks like from an ontology point of view. We have basic framework for describing the work and authorship and, um, and the addition its publication. But the real meat of the data set uh, lies here, basically in the, uh, in the copies that were printed, the, the history of the ownerships, the annotations that they, that they have, and possible alterations that might be applied upon the copies. Now, uh, it is easy from a look at this um, ontology scheme that there is indeed a significant use of Seroxerem and Ferber, uh, and this is indeed the case. Mm, not only with using these as basic building blocks, but also Ferberu 
comes into help. Uh, when it comes to our help for specifically modeling um, tangential aspects of the publication process. But then on top of that, uh, we made significant use of some of these SPAR ontologies. SPAR is a network of ontologies specific for uh, modeling semantic publications. Of those, we use the bibliographical one, which is called Fabio, and the uh, and DOCO, which is about document structure. And then there is a, a whole deal of uh, custom vocabularies uh, for the notation for Soros uh, and others, other terms we're working on. Ideally, the tip of this pyramid would uh, be containing uh, external um, control vocabularies such as the AT from Getty. And maybe I hear some of you wonder why not the web, web notation data model. We will get to that. So, we are indeed uh, modeling all the, the core aspects of, uh, of FRBR and curating most of them. Uh, so we have mappings to works, as I was saying, additions uh, in our model, uh, and the pages, that the optimal, pristine pages therein, are mapped to the notion of, of further manifestation. And then we have the physical copies and the, and the pages that might be there, or might have been torn uh, as items. What we do have only uh, in a non-curated version is uh, the form of expression, to speak of it in terms of FRBR. Now, Ferberu um, gives us a way to model expressions uh, by simply providing the basic expression that has, has to exist for the edition to be published. But there are a couple of additional challenges on top of that. Um, we are not currently curating expressions because we haven't come across uh, phenomena that generate many, multiple, many expressions just yet. Uh, typical phenomena for expressions are translations, uh, all of what is in the census is uh, only in Latin and more recent English translations. Uh, you can find them on Gutenberg, but they are like recent, not really published um, editions. And uh, cases of, of censorship that occurs before the publication, so what is called censura previa, is something we haven't come across yet uh, in the copies we have analyzed, but we need to be ready for them. So this is, in a way, uh, being open to future research questions uh, within the project. Uh, there is, however, an issue uh, which is cropping up with the more recent copies, and it's uh, the phenomenon whereby the printing process actually causes alterations that ultimately should result in new further expressions in their own, in, in their own rights. Uh, what we're seeing here is a case of uh, multiple copies in which there is a mistakenly printed E with an accent here. Uh, and then, presumably, in an attempt to correct this, the, uh, the printer first uh, tried to erase manually uh, the, well, the error, but then actually changed, changed the, uh, the printing matrix so that subsequent copies would result in not having the error at all. Now, uh, this is something that was pretty frequent before 1700, mostly. And this is indeed causing new expression, uh, new expressions being created, which is something that we intend to tackle uh, in subsequent um, iterations of the project. But another important aspect is the one of annotations. Uh, right now, uh, we are considering annotations, annotations to be organized around two levels. One that basically describes the material of kind of annotation that it is, so a text, a numbering, a highlighting, a strike out, um, a stamp, a dog in the dog ear, and then the underlying semantics. Is it a, a philological correction? Is it an argumentation? Is it a censorship? Um, is it, you know, claiming ownership uh, of, of that copy? There are many types of, of, of annotations in that respect, and right now we're having two reasonably flat uh, the Sora, which we're managing uh, internally and which are still growing as we get more copies scanned and analyzed. What we want to do with that is ultimately bring this into a an, uh, semantic annotation framework. And this is being challenging for us uh, because, again, the uh, variability of annotations is more than the web annotation data model from W3C uh, can honestly accommodate. So while we can retrofit into that, uh, we should probably look into the argumentation model. Of course, CRM gives us the inscription framework for the phenomenology of annotations, but we have to consider 
to bring these together with uh, uh, the actual annotation data model, an argumentation data model of which an instance exists in the spar ontology is the AMO, but also domain uh, entities. So actual do uh, a model of the uh, of magnetism, which is something we're working on. Uh, as a matter of fact, um, we are conducting like clustering and even TISNI and UMAP based uh, visualization organization of the copies based on their annotations in this regard. Uh, what is going to uh, the output of that will be uh, presented in a longer paper in the future, along with the proper linked dataization uh, of the content, which uh, is already taking place in the original database which Christoph mentioned and it's just a matter of uh, uh, of ETLing that into the RDF representation which uh, whereupon the blaze graph and research space instance lies along with transcriptions and TI or page XML we're looking into what we want to present in that regard that will be available uh, with AAAF wherever we can point to external AAAF presentations of specific scanned copies so Thanks very much. Uh, I hope I didn't take too much time with the stunt of double presentations. Please do reach out. And um, with all likelihood, the, um, Christoph and Hassan should be uh, online able to answer questions related to the project. Well, I'm happy to answer questions about the model, of course. Thank you.